Now more about just video games. I love my tabletop games as well. When I was a kid, me and my father used to play Yahtzee or Checkers almost every night before I went to bed. And as such, I like to continue things like that to this day. Well, I'm also a huge fan of Star Trek, as is my girlfriend. So about a year ago, we were looking for a good Star Trek game to play together. Fortunately, we live in a city with not one, but two great tabletop gaming stores. So we go to one of them, the Game Board, shameless plug, and we ask, hey, we're looking for a Star Trek game, what do you recommend? And they had three, Star Trek Five Year Mission, Star Trek Panic, and Star Trek Assidiary. Well, they actually was able to sit down and give us a demo of one of the games right there in store because they go above and beyond like that. And we bought the game straight away without even trying the other two. So today we're talking about the one we bought that day. Star Trek, five-year mission. So grab a friend, pour some mead, put on your favorite folk metal playlist, and get ready to boldly go where no one has gone before because this is Star Trek, five-year mission. So you choose your Enterprise, the of course the original series Enterprise, and then Next Generations Enterprise D. The stats are exactly the same, and unless you're going for some serious world building, it doesn't matter. I like the Enterprise D's design, so we're going with that. When putting together your alert decks, you have to decide between the original series and next generation series. The cards are actually labeled, which they are, but the icon's a bit hard to see. You find the Enterprise from the original series up here, and that's for the original series. The Enterprise D is down here for the next generation, and some cards are used for both. Me, I cheat. I just do a crossover and throw all the decks together. Missions are done through completing the alerts. Blue, yellow, and red. Blue being the easiest, red being the most difficult. At the start of your turn, you'll flip one of these three cards over. But you have to be careful. Say you want to do blue, and you pull your blue. Now you see this. This icon here tells you now you need to pull a yellow alert. So you put this down, and you pull your, your yellow card. Now, as you can see, it's telling me to pull a red. So you place it down, and you pull your red. And instead of doing something easy, like one blue alert, you've now got all three on the table. So how do you complete these missions? It's quite simple. You roll your dice, and you match them up by color and number. For example, you need a red 2, a red 3, a blue 4, and a blue 5 to complete this one. For this card, you need a yellow 3 or higher. So you roll your dice. And from here we match up the numbers on the dice with the cards. For example, I have a blue 4, so it will go there. And I've got this red 3 to go here. Best of all, I've got a yellow 3 to put it on here. Now this mission's complete, it goes away, but the other two are still active for the next player. So now the next player draws a card. We'll go with the yellow alert. So that's our card, and this one's a bit different. It has this black border around the dice. That means all those dice must be played at the same time. They don't have to be rolled at the same time, but you have to play the numbers all at once. So our next player rolls. And we've gotten pretty lucky here. We've got a red 6 that can be played, a blue 3, and a blue 1 that can go on this 2 or less. And we've been able to complete that mission in one go. Each player picks one of seven characters. And there's seven cards, but they're double-sided. One for a Next Generation crew member, and one for an original series. For example, here you see Captain Picard and Mr. Spock. Each character's card has a number somewhere on the top. For some cards, it's the upper left. and other cards, it's the upper right. In any event, the number, in this case five, indicates which turn you take. If you were playing as Lieutenant Uhura and you had a full set of seven people, you would take the fifth turn of the game. Each character has a special ability. For example, Captain Kirk says one time on your turn you may re-roll all the dice of a single color. And this is where the strategy aspect of the game comes into play. Say I'm playing as Captain Kirk, I roll my dice. Uh, I have some pretty good stuff here. I can use, let's say I can use these two reds. But the blues, I'm not happy with. So I can take those and re-roll them again. And now you know how to play the game. Well, maybe not exactly. It gets a bit more complicated. I just gave you the basics. The easiest way to learn a game like this is to, well, play it. Or in this case, watch somebody play it. And fortunately, I've got a good friend of mine here who's going to help me play a few rounds so we can show you how it's done. So first thing we do is pick our characters. My buddy Thor, he's going to be playing as Captain Picard. Go, you get to be the captain. And I'll be playing as my Trek woman of choice, the lovely Dr. Beverly Crusher. Rrrr. Each player will be given five dice, two red, two blue, and a yellow. Your dice, sir. 
and Thor decides to draw a red alert. This alert has this symbol here, which means it's a prime directive. And that means we have to finish this before we can finish any other mission. Thor takes his roll. This mission requires a blue 5, a red 3 or lower, or a red 5 or higher. Well, we've got a 1 and a 2 for red, so we can play those right away. So, Thor places his red 2 over the 3 or lower icon, and then it becomes my turn. I pull a yellow alert. And this one has this symbol here, which means that once I've completed this mission, whoever completes it gets this card and can use it to heal their allies. More on that later. Take my roll. You can see I have a blue 5, a blue 2, a yellow 4, a red 4, and a red 5. Let's check it against our mission objectives. One thing I can do with the alert I just drew. However, I can't finish this red one by placing my, my blue here and my red 5 here. And now this one's gone. It's a good thing too because that was the prime directive and it needed to be completed first. So what happens to the three dice that were on that card? They go into the dice pool. And then it goes back to Thor's turn. So on your character card you have two slots. Actions and injuries. Your dice you rolled on your previous turn go into your actions. So you can play those as they are or you can roll them. But we have to replenish our dice first. So Thor needs to take at least one more dice to have a total of five. So our captain picks his dice, picks his alert, this time he's going for a blue. And this alert reads, if failed, Enterprise takes one damage, but it only needs a five or higher of any number. Well, there are plenty of sixes that he's already got, so he's going to move his blue six to the side. But he's going to re-roll the other dice plus his new one. Right now he's going to use this blue six to finish that last mission, but can he do anything with this other mission we've got up there? Well, he does have a red 3, and it needs a red 3. So the red 3 gets placed, and then I'll go ahead and put his blue 6 there for him. And that mission goes away as well. Dice goes to the dice pool, and then it's my turn. I pull a red alert, and this one has two things on it. One, it's got this little icon up on the right-hand side. That means it's a timed mission. The second is it reads, you are injured. So one of my dice moves over to injuries. And since I can only have a total of five dice, that means I can now only grab two from the dice pool that I can use. I grab my two dice, we set the timer next to this, so if this runs out, this mission gets failed. Fortunately, as a doctor, I've got a bit of an advantage. My ability reads, during dice placement, you may use one of your blue dice to reduce one injury per crew member on a number of crew equal to that number of the die. That sounds less confusing than it is. So I'm going to roll these three. I actually got really lucky with this dice roll. So first thing I'm going to do is use my blue dice to heal myself. With her ability, what it's saying is that the number on the die is the number of crew members you could heal. So if six people were injured, I could heal six people. But in this case, it's just myself. So this one's going to the dice pool. And this one will be coming back into play. Here's where things get lucky. I rolled a red two and a blue three. Exactly what I need to complete this timed mission. So this one goes away, and my timer gets off the board. And throughout the game, the Enterprise can also be injured. That's what this indicator is for. If it gets all the way up here and takes another hit, the game's over. The way you repair it is by these red dice that correspond, or your engineers have ways of working around that. The other way that you can end the game is by failing alerts. Five failed alerts means the game's over. One way to fail these? Well, if you have three of any color, and you draw a fourth, in this case, say a blue, and you're unable to complete any of them in that row on this turn, the oldest one fails. Five of those, game's over. Once the game ends, you add up your points, which are indicated by this little Starfleet combat symbol on the card. Now, as I said, some of your blue alerts don't actually have this, but the ones you complete, you want to put aside and then count those out. The final page of the directions tell you how many points you need for each rank. For example, to make Ensign, you have to have 10 points in one of each color. Anything less than that in the game, well, you lost. To hit Admiral, you need 20 points, two of each color, and one Urgent. Urgents being, you know, the ones with the little timer next to them. So as you can see, this game's a lot of fun and has a lot to offer. And what I showed you just scratched the surface. There's various other cards to really mix things up and different abilities you can get, not to mention the ones the characters have themselves. I'd recommend this to anybody, and not just a Star Trek fan. If you have no desire to play Star Trek, you've never seen any of the movies, the TV shows, anything, you're not going to be lost playing this. You're going to have a blast. And it's recommended for three to seven players. So you can get a lot of people playing this. We usually just have the two of us, and we like to play two characters at a time. We tried around where we played three, but that was a little bit hard to 
keep track of. Anyway, I'm going to go play another round of this, and I'll see you next time.